Hi guys, um, I'm doing quite a hard topic today so that's why I've got my textbook because I do need to refer to it sometimes. Um, I'm actually looking at biotechnology today so that will only be applicable to certain people out there st studying certain exam boards. It's going to be talking about microorganisms and how we can use them in industry, how we can modify them in order to use them um, and create lots of things that are very useful to us. I've done a separate video on genetic engineering so if you're looking for the manufacture of insulin I'll link that there and that's the video you need to watch because what I'm going to be talking about more is fermentation, looking at manufacturing beer and also yoghurt production, both of which are very complex things. So microorganisms, remember these are very very tiny organisms and there's several different groups of them. First of all you've got the prototista, I hope I'm saying that right, prototists, and these are single cell organisms and they include things like amoeba. We've got fungi and the ones which you'll be familiar with are things like yeast which we use to make our bread rise or we can use in fermentation to make alcohol. We have bacteria, um, so this isn't to do with um, biotechnology but they may ask you in the exam for some examples of bacteria so name anything like tuberculosis or salmonella or E. coli. If they ask you about viruses you can give examples such as HIV and flu. Hey cat! So key examples of viruses are HIV and the flu virus. Yeah, and that's really all I wanted to talk about. Now, we can modify the, gene the genes of these different organisms in order to get them to do things that we want them to do. So in the case of genetic engineering of insulin production, what you're doing is you're taking a human insulin gene, inserting it into a bacteria, bacterial plasmid, and basically getting it to do what you want it to do. Now, the thing about most of these microorganisms is that they work anaerobically, which means they don't require oxygen to respire and then based on that they will produce different things. So if we add yeast, for example, to sugar, what you can produce is alcohol and CO2. Now carbon dioxide is used to make bread rice and the alcohol is obviously used to help manufacture our favourite spirits of wines and beers. Now what you find is most of these microorganisms are grown in fermenters. Where did the cat go? And they may ask you a few questions about the fermenters. So for example, if the bacteria do respire aerobically, they may ask you what the purpose of the air in that is, and you would say to allow oxygen in to allow the bacteria to respire aerobically. They may ask you what the role of the cooling jacket is, and that's in order to maintain a perfect optimum temperature, because remember the enzymes will denature inside these microorganisms if they're allowed to get too hot, and if it gets too cold, then you may find that they don't actually work effectively enough. They'll also have to control the pH. Why? Because again, if the enzymes um, reach a pH which is not their optimum, they may denature, which will alter their active site, so just be clear on the different conditions. Am I steaming up? Oh my goodness, it's so hot today. I mean, it's what? It's May, and it's like it feels like it's 30, 40 degrees. I know you probably think I'm crazy, but it feels very, very warm. So let's talk about beer making. Now, unlike wine, beer is made from barley. Now, barley does not contain sugar as its carbohydrate. Grapes do contain sugar, so therefore that sugar can directly be used by the yeast in order to ferment and produce alcohol. However, we need some extra steps involved with barley because its carbohydrate is starch. So first of all, we get some barley seeds. They need to germinate because they've been dormant for a while, so you need to add water to them to allow them to germinate. At this point, we're not interested in them anymore, so we actually kill them by heating them. But what the heat does is it doesn't actually denature the enzymes, so the enzymes are still good to go. We then add the enzyme amylase. Remember amylase breaks down starch, so that amylase will break down the starch into maltose or glucose, depending on which one you're happier with. Then we add something called hops, and what they do is they give the beer a very distinctive taste. And what we need to do at that point is add yeast, because that's our crucial microorganism which will actually produce the alcohol. So what the yeast does is it feeds upon the sugar and converts it into alcohol and CO2, carbon dioxide. Lastly, we centrifuge the beer which means we spin it, we filter it to remove any impurities that we don't want and we pasteurise it which means we heat it a little bit to remove the microorganisms. This is hard, what a complicated topic. In the manufacture of yoghurt we are not using yeast anymore, we are using lactic acid bacteria because what we're doing is we're converting milk into that sour thicker thing we know as yoghurt. So first of all what you need to do is you need to grab the milk and you need to pasteurise it and what that means is heat it so that it kills any bacteria which are present. So what they do is they heat it to 85 degrees for approximately 30 minutes in order to kill any pre-existing microbes. After that we do 
we homogenise the milk and what that means is it means distributing the fat droplets in the milk equally and evenly throughout the mixture. Then we cool the milk down to about 45 degrees and at this point we can add the bacterial culture which will actually cause the milk to convert itself into yoghurt. 45 degrees we incubate that milk and what will happen in that case is the bacteria will digest some of the milk proteins and it will also convert the lactose which is the sugar found in milk into lactic acid giving it that distinctive sour taste. Lastly, we just cool that yoghurt down further to about 5 degrees and then at this point we can start adding any of the flavourings which make yoghurt so delicious unless you prefer it natural and then in that case it is done. Now this is a difficult topic, I am going to attach some questions at the end because I know it's hard. Um, I'm really sorry you have to learn such complicated things but yeah, just remember a few of the crucial steps, add in any scientific words and hopefully you'll be good to go. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like my video, I'm sorry if it wasn't as good as you wanted it to be, but this is hard to explain and I'm glad the cat made an appearance for once. See you very soon, bye! Some food products are made using microorganisms. The table gives information about the production of two of these food products. Complete the table by giving the missing information. Right, okay, um, for the first row, my clues really here are that I've got glucose coming in, ethanol coming out, which is a type of alcohol, and Actually, the fact that I've been told that it's yeast is actually obviously really useful. And so the first thing here that yeast is used to do, make is either beer or wine or bread or anything sensible. And remember, the type of respiration it carries out is anaerobic. Next up, we've got yoghurt, and we need the name of the organism used. Sorry, I probably should have mentioned this more specifically in my video. The name of the specific bacterium is the lactobacillus, or you could have written streptococcus. This is very detailed. And remember, that what they do is they break down the sugar found in yoghurt, which is lactose, and what they produce out of that is lactic acid, which gives it that distinctive sour taste. Explain one, one precaution that should be taken when making yoghurt so that it's safe for humans to eat. Remember I said that they pasteurise it at some point near the beginning, and what that does is it kills the microorganisms or bacteria. The diagram shows the parts of a fermenter used to grow large numbers of genetically modified bacteria. There's a lot going on there. Suggest so how the air inlet helps the genetically modified bacteria to grow. Well, let's think about the components of air. It contains nitrogen. Well, that's a bit pointless. Oxygen. Right, oxygen is the key gas here. So you're going to say that the air inlet allows oxygen in to allow the bacteria to aerobically respire. If the pH probe stops working, the pH in the fermenter becomes more acidic. Describe and explain how this affects the production of human insulin. So you need to say what's going to happen to production and you need to say why. So you're going to say that less insulin is produced and the reason why is because you have fewer bacteria because the problem is is that the acidity has caused the enzymes to denature as it's no longer the optimum pH. I just realised these questions are super bitty and small. Oh well. Yeast can respire anaerobically and is used to produce beer. Write the word equation for anaerobic respiration in yeast. So you need to write here glucose aero um, produces alcohol plus carbon dioxide. And that's all you need to write here. Describe a test you could use to identify the gas produced when yeast respires anaerobically. Gosh, we're dipping into chemistry here. Well, the gas we're looking at is CO2, so remember you need to add the gas to lime water, and if it turns cloudy, we know that carbon dioxide is present. The diagram shows a model of an industrial fermenter used to study how changes in conditions can affect the yield of products. There's some really weird words. What on earth is a sparger? and an agitator, presumably it's a stirrer. Anyway, an acid or alkali can, and also I wanted to point out that even I don't know like some of these words, but you just need to not panic and think about what's going on, use your common sense and you'll eventually get to the answer. Anyhow, an acid or alkali can flow through the acid alkali inlet to maintain a constant pH within the fermenter. Explain why the pH needs to be kept within a narrow range. As soon as we're talking about pH or temperature, we're talking about enzymes. So mention that for the first mark. You need to say that they need to be at an optimum pH for the second mark because if the pH differs from that, then they become denatured for the third mark and you could always add that that means that the active site is deformed. So actually not so bad there. Parts of the ferment are responsible for regulating the temperature are not shown in the diagram. Name two of these parts. Right, they haven't shown on the diagram the water jacket or a temperature sensor. This fermenter uses a sparger to introduce air into the fermenter, suggests why it is important to introduce air into the fermenter. Air contains oxygen, so oxygen is needed. And why? Because of aerobic respiration. You need to stay aerobic here, otherwise you won't get the mark, because obviously anaerobic respiration doesn't require oxygen. Before being used, the empty fermenter is cleaned using steam, suggests why. Well, using the steam indicates that we're actually sterilising the tank 
and that's in order to kill the microorganisms and because um, we don't want other organisms competing with our you know specific organism that we've added so actually write that and you'll be fine so I finally found a question on making yoghurt. A student found the following instructions for making yoghurt on the internet. Put the milk in the saucepan and heat to 80 degrees. Pour the hot milk into a bowl and leave to cool for 46 degrees. Add the organisms needed to change the milk into yoghurt. Pour the yoghurt into glass jars. Put them in a warm place for 8 hours. Put the yoghurt into a sterile airtight container and pop into the fridge. Name an organism added to change the milk into yoghurt. You need to specify here either bacto lactobacillus or streptococcus. Explain why the milk is heated 80 degrees. Remember that is one of the first steps and it's used to pasteurise the milk, um, which actually means to kill um, or sterilise any microorganisms. So for the first mark, write pasteurise or sterilise for the second mark um, to kill microorganisms. Explain why the milk must be cooled to 46 degrees. The reason why we need to do this is to avoid killing the lactobacillus and also 46 degrees is the optimum temperature for the enzymes. Explain why the yoghurt is kept in a warm place for eight hours. Okay, the thing here is eight hours is to allow enough time to make the lactic acid and it's the perfect time, um, it's the perfect amount of time for the bacteria to reproduce and it's actually at the optimum temperature for their enzymes. Changes take place to the pH of the yoghurt which is kept warm for eight hours. Describe and explain how the change in pH helps to preserve the yoghurt. Well, the change in pH will mean that the bacteria is killed because it denatures the enzymes and effectively that stops the yoghurt going off. Slightly different question, but it should be useful nonetheless. John wanted to inv investigate the effect of temperature on the rate of carbon dioxide production by yeast. He set up the following apparatus. So we've got yeast and glucose solution covered with a layer of oil. We need to be thinking, why is that oil there? Um, and then we've got bubbles of gas being produced in the water. The oil layer prevents the entry of air into the glucose solution. Explain why this is necessary. Well, remember that yeast carry out anaerobic respiration and therefore you need to keep the oxygen out. John varied the temperature of the water bath between 15 and, and 65 degrees Celsius. He measured the rate of carbon dioxide production by counting the number of bubbles per minute. Sketch the shape of the graph that John would obtain in the axis below. So I'm sorry, I've lost my little pen thing. But you need to draw a straight line starting from the origin and it needs to go up at about 45 degrees and then it needs to peak because the optimum temperature is about, I don't know, 37 degrees and then it needs to drop off all the way back down to the x-axis because remember the enzymes will denature when the temperature is too hot. Sorry, I haven't got my pen. Give the dependent variable in this experiment. Right, remember the dependent variable is what you measure. So what you're looking for here is the amount of carbon dioxide produced. Give the independent variable in the experiment. Remember this is what you change. What have you changed? Well, it's the temperature. Give two variables that John would need to keep the same, so you need to specify your control variables here. So you could have said the volume of glucose, or the concentration of glucose, or the mass of yeast, or the type of yeast, or the pH of the solution. So lots of options. Suggest one way that John could improve the reliability of his experiment. Just write the word repeat here. Suggest how John could improve the accuracy of his measurement of the rate of carbon dioxide production. Right, rather than counting bubbles or anything like that, he should probably use a gas syringe or a measuring cylinder. Yeast is used to produce beer. Write the word equation for the respiration of yeast that occurs during the production of beer. So you need to write glucose, arrow, produces either ethanol or alcohol plus carbon dioxide. Hope you found this helpful. The questions are a bit weird. Um, definitely worth looking at past papers. Don't forget to like my video and subscribe. Bye. Thank you.